Okay, as I said previously in uh, the last couple of clips, uh, you know, the will of God, it reigns supreme in the life of the believer. He, uh, we go by his direction. Yes, we have our own will. I can choose what kind of ice cream I want, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, raspberry, whatever it is. Uh, but that's not um, that's not free will. That's an illusion of free will. You think to yourself, well, because I can choose um, to get up at 7.15 instead of uh, 7 o'clock, that somehow that is uh, your will being expressed. And it is, but it doesn't give us the full picture of what it means to have free will. So let me see if I can explain by an analogy. Let's take, um, you know, I've, I've had uh, five children I raised. Now, when they're just a few months old, six months old, let's say you put them on the floor, they kind of roll around on the carpet, they do the thing, but, you know, you don't leave that child alone. You, uh, you watch that child, you're there next to the child because the child um, could accidentally roll onto something or pick something up, put it in its mouth. And, you know, if you have an animal, maybe the animal's jumping on top of it, or whatever, and you're not watching, you know, something could happen. So you are going to stay close to your child as much as possible. So now the child gets a little bit older and it's able to walk around and run around. You're not going to let him run outside. He's a year old, uh, maybe 18 months you know, even two years old, you're not going to let that child go outside and run around, even if it's in the backyard. And the reason for that is because you know that the child um, could, you know, potentially get harmed in some way. If you allowed the child to play outside, um, maybe you have a fence in your yard, maybe you don't. But either way, uh, let's say the child is now five years old. So for brief moments, for one minute, perhaps, and even that for a five-year-old, I think, in my opinion, is stretching your responsibility as a parent to let that child play outside by uh, himself or herself. So, uh, but let's say that you do. Uh, what are you going to do? One minute? And you're not going to do it if there's not a fence around the yard. So, see, you have will. And let's say that the child is six or seven years old and you're letting the child play outside for extended lengths of time, 10, 15, 20 minutes without your, you know, checking on them. And again, I think, you know, you should always check on your child as often as possible. But let's say that you do that. Uh, you're still going to make sure that you have some kind of a hedge of protection around that child. You're going to, uh, first of all, you're, you are going to check on the child frequently. And second of all, you're going to have uh, a fence around. Now, that child can express his will with the power that he has. And... Um, in with the determination of his desires you know i mean if he desires to dig a hole you know he could dig a hole but if he desired to get on the other side of the fence um he has to have the ability to be able to do that perhaps you have a gate you have a lock on it he doesn't have the key he's not getting out he would have to dig underneath the fence or climb over it and i guess that's possible but the point being is that uh he does have a hedge around him and we are very much like the same thing uh, if, for example, I were to take my arms and cut them off and my legs and cut them off and all I am is just a bit of a stump uh, with a voice. But let's say I even take my voice away. I'm not able to talk. I'm not able to express myself. Now, what kind of desires would I have? Well, certainly I'd have the same desires as what any of you would have. I would want to be able to do the things that you do. I would want to get up, uh, maybe ride a bike, go for a ride in a car. Um, you know, maybe do some uh, jump rope or running, uh, playing outside. Uh, anything that anybody else would want to do, uh, my desires are there as well. But the desire is not the will. The will is what performs the desire. So you got to remember when you're thinking about these things that you don't take it to the extreme and try to um, exchange your desire for your will because those are two separate things. So having said that now, can you imagine if um, you wanted to, let's say, live on the surface of the sun? Uh, that could be your desire, uh, but you don't have the power to do that. Even if you were able to commandeer some spaceship and somehow fly to the sun, you still would not be able to land. Um, you couldn't even get close to the sun. As soon as you got too close, you'd burn up from it, you know? <laughs> so it's kind of ridiculous to think about it, but... There is someone who has the power to do that, 
And, of course, that is God. I mean, God, he can actually uh, change uh, or, or uh, let's say, manifest himself as a being, uh, as a sun being, as uh, something that can uh, withstand uh, whatever temperatures there are on the surface or even in the center of the sun. He could fix it so he could walk across the, you know, the uh, the rays of sun or whatever you want to call it, the plasma. Um, he could do that because he has that power. So his will is um, omnipotent, if you will. It, it, it's able to express any desire that comes into his mind. Um, humans are limited in their will because they have limited power. So you cannot have a will without, you can't speak about the will without speaking about the power to express that. And this goes right back into what I was talking about earlier regarding the freedom of the will when we talk about spiritual matters. So we're going to do that in the next clip.